Hi, this is uh, Staff Sergeant Lee, your good guy recruiter again. I'm still stuck at this airport, so I figured I'd take some time. If you see my other video, the one about picking your job in the Army, you'll know I'm stuck at the airport right now. I have a few hours to kill. So um, I'm going to do another video. This one is basically just a little introduction of myself. I've uh, just a little bit about my Army career. Uh, I joined right out of high school, and I was on track to graduate and go to college and everything. Did really well in high school. Uh, the main reason I joined was for the college money. Uh, I, I needed to find a way to pay for college. I come from a divorced family. Uh, my mom was working two jobs in Taiwan just to help uh, pay for the living expenses for me to go th through high school. So uh, she was having, she was worried about how she was going to help me pay for college. And uh, I made a decision very early on that, you know, I didn't want my mom to worry about it. So. Right around that time, I get a call from my recruiter, and they, the recruiter told me, actually, all he really had to tell me was about college. All right, my mom wasn't very happy that I made that decision, uh, but I told her, hey, listen, mom, the Army's going to give me three hots and a cot. I'll, I'll be able to take care of myself. I'll have a steady paycheck, and plus, I'll get my education done. So, you got to remember that. You gotta, I promised mom I, I'd get my education done. I'd get to that part a little later. Since I've been in the Army, I've been stationed in a lot of different places. Uh, I've been stationed in Fort Jackson, South Carolina, Schofield Barracks, Hawaii, uh, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, and currently I'm a recruiter in Southern California, like you know. Uh, I've been on deployments. I've been to Bosnia uh, for seven months. I did a 12-month tour in Afghanistan and a 15-month tour in Iraq. Uh, my job in the Army is a chaplain assistant prior to becoming a recruiter. And the reason why I'm a chaplain assistant when I went down to Meps to take the ASVAB, and um, it, it went great. I scored a 92, really high, good scores. I qualified for a lot. I wanted to get into communications, but they couldn't put me in communications because it turns out I'm colorblind. So that narrowed my choices of jobs. So chaplain assistant was one of the jobs that popped up. And uh, if you want to learn more about chaplain's assistant, there's a link on my website to go to the MOS uh, YouTube videos definitely check it out. It's a great MOS, great job. You work for past, you work with pastors and uh, talk about getting some great mentorship. Now, that's that's moving a little too f far from what I'm trying to do. Um, so, you know, now I'm fa fast forward about 15, 16 years. You know, I've, I've had a pretty good run in the Army. I'm a recruiter now. Uh, I've, I'm four years from hitting 20, which is where I can think about if I want to get out, do my retirement. Plus, that promise I made to my mom. I have my associate's degree, my bachelor's degree, and I'm currently working on my master's degree. You know, associate's general studies. I did get a bachelor's in finance, and my master's is going to be in human resources. So, you know, promise mom. If you promise mom something, you gotta you gotta come through. Um, I'm married now. I've got three beautiful kids, and they they all are, are reaping. Uh, well, I don't want to say reaping, but they they kind of are reaping the benefits of what what I decided what I made that decision to do you know I, I was dealt a certain deck of cards you know I was dealt a hand of cards that w was mediocre at best but I turned it around and I made it something different the decisions I made um, that decision to join the army when I was an 18 year old high school student has has long reaching after effects because not only does it affect myself my wife but it affects our kids as well you know, maybe my son and my two daughters, maybe they won't join the Army. Uh, maybe they, they, they'll go on to go to college because I've got the post-9-11 GI Bill, which means I'm going to pass that on to them, and they'll get to go to uh, some of their college for free. So maybe they'll go on, they, they won't serve. That's not the point. The point is, is that they'll always have that in their lineage. I'll set an example for them. Maybe they don't serve. Maybe they do. If they do, great. You know, maybe their kids will serve. Maybe one day, I always imagine one day, my son, you know, sitting there with his family, talking to his grandkids, talking to my grandkids, and my grandkids would ask him, hey, um, I'm, we're reading about Iraq and Afghanistan in our history books, and it'd be really cool if my son could say, hey, you know, your grandpa was there. You know, you should go talk to your grandpa about that. So, it's just, just one of those little things, you know, Kodak moment that, that kind of, that kind of struck me, and, um, it's about building that legacy. You know, you get dealt a certain 
can and then you just make the best of it you know i i hate to quote rap songs i i'm not a big rap music guy but you know drake songs start from the bottom you know so hey, if this is something that may be up your alley you know talk to your recruiter check out my website check out those other videos uh, check out all the links get that info if you if you want go to the contact page fill out uh the bottom right hand corner there's a little uh, what we call a lead card you just fill that out and I'll give you a call back or one of the recruiters will give you a call back answer any questions you may have and if this is something you want to do hey we'll help you process it if it's not then hey no hard feelings you know the army's not for everybody all right take care